Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 13th of July and we're going to do a YouTube update today covering NASDAQ to begin with, which we've got on the chart before us right now. Uh, also, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. We're long due an update on Bitcoin. Main reason I haven't really done a YouTube video on it for a good while is because there's not been that much to report. My analysis hadn't really changed. Um, and um, But now it looks like we can expect a breakout on Bitcoin pretty imminently. So I thought this was quite a timely time to do a update. And yeah, I think as my belief is that the, the stock markets here are gonna have a huge impact on the direction of the breakout on Bitcoin. Now, so that's essentially what I wanna discuss in this video. I wanna give initially my views on the stock markets and we're gonna give a, a lot of focus on the NASDAQ to begin with. And then we're gonna talk about Bitcoin, really break down the chart and give an explanation for my current forecast, which is very different to what I was forecasting before. And I'll give my justification for that based on the new price action that we've seen on the stock markets in particular. Um, so yeah, these are the things that we're really gonna discuss in today's video. So if interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. All right, so let's start off focusing on the NASDAQ. So here we've got NASDAQ on the monthly time frame, and we're on the linear scale. So that's why you can really see and appreciate the parabolic nature that we're seeing in price action here. And you can see we are literally going vertical. We're literally climbing a wall here. Uh, and it's, it's pretty amazing to see. Um, it's, it is unprecedented. You only have to look at the range on each of these candles to see the real volatility in this market, just comparing it to the small uh, ranges on the candles prior. So it really is remarkable what we're seeing right here. But I suppose the more remarkable thing is the fact that we've had a lot of negative economic data. I mean, we're due to get our second quarter um, reports for GDP come the end of July. And we all know we could, we were all expecting negative numbers to confirm that you know the um, second successive quarter of um, regression with regards to GDP and confirming a recession. Yet we're still seeing the markets just absolutely flying. Um, so incredible stuff that we're seeing right here. And let's not forget, obviously, monetary policy has been completely exhausted. We are at zero percent interest rates. So we're literally, all we're relying on now is fiscal policy where money is being pumped in via stimulus. And it has been doing that in, again, unprecedented amounts. And that is what is propping up these markets, maintaining investor uh, confidence. And the question is, when does that end? That is the ultimate question. Is it about to you know, fall apart right now? Has it got a few more months to go? Has it got years to go? These are the big questions that we need to ask. Uh, so that's what I'm going to really go on and talk about in, in this video. So, um, but yeah, first of all, just looking at it on the linear scale, we can really appreciate what is going on here. So um, let's just zoom in now and let's take a look on the log scale. And I want to pull on some annotations that I've got. So as you know, I'm a big fan of Elliott Wave and Pitchforks and looking at ranges also. Um, so here we've got the Elliott Wave count that I'm looking at, as well as the pitchfork that I've drawn from post-2008 recession. Okay, so basically our first impulse up, we've got is the Wave 1, Wave 2, and then this is allows you to draw your pitchfork using the first three pivots. So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, followed the shift pitchfork really, really nicely. Uh, pretty much contained price action well up until this point here. But still, as you can see, price has been maintained within the pitchfork. Now, the major count that I've got is the wave one, two, three, four, and then we go into a fifth, of which it's been extended, and our sub wave count is a wave one, two, three, four, sorry, four, and then fifth is going higher. So, as you can see, the four would be a running flat, and then we're going into our fifth, which I believe can quite easily tag the upper median line. I'm expecting a move up to here. I think the upper warning line might be 
a little bit ambitious. Uh, it's certainly possible. So if we look, I am anticipating a, a good run up in the NASDAQ up until the US election. So if we look up, up until November, you can see, you can imagine it going up within this fashion, hitting the upper warning line uh, in around November. And that brings us up until, you know, 13 slash 14 K. Now, if it only comes up to the upper median line, probably comes up to around 12, 12 and a half K. So these are the kind of ballpark figures that I'm looking at. But ultimately, I think it's got a lot of scope to move up higher here. So yeah, when you see vertical price action like this, there's every reason to think it could topple over at any moment. But at the same time, it needs that catalyst before it topples over. And I believe that would, the most likely impact that's going to cause that is going to be uh, the US election. Yeah, we've had massive negative news stories within the media and investor confidence has been maintained. So we've had, you know, concerns about coronavirus. We've had social unrest and yet the markets still to keep going higher. So I think now the only thing that can really get worse for the markets is, you know, a major political uh, change. So the US election, essentially. So I ba basically I'm looking out and what I anticipate is a massive pump and dump, essentially. I think we're going to see a massive spike up and then we're going to see a huge, huge move down uh, at around the time of the election. Yeah, that's just my speculation at this moment in time. OK, so the, obviously these indices are largely influenced by, you know, the larger market cap companies that they represent. So we're going to take a look at Apple, uh, which is obviously very representative of the Nasdaq. Um, but let's not forget the Nasdaq has a lot of reason to do well. Yeah, so we've had a lot of stimulus come in, a lot of financial stimulus to maintain investor confidence. And it's the sector of the economy that is likely to do well, even with lock in a lockdown situation, because people are still going to be using uh, tech and probably going to be using it even more. Yeah, so there's every reason why it is climbing the wall and going vertical right now. So I do think it's going to continue and I can't see it changing until the US election. That is the only thing that could impact on investor confidence, in my opinion. Obviously, under Trump, I think a lot of investors have confidence that there's going to be fiscal stimulus to support the economy. But that support could be lost with any change in government. So that's the kind of background that I'm looking at and justification for why I'm anticipating a continuation of this vertical move up up until November. OK, so with that said, let's just take a look at Apple. So on Apple, um, I want to show you, first of all, the larger Elliott Wave count that I've got. And I'll show. So this is on the log scale. I've drawn it from here. So from 97, done the wave one, two, three, four and the fifth. Now, it's not that obviously it looks very distorted on the log scale. If we go on the linear. It's looking something like this. So you wave one, two, three, four, and this is your fifth that we're working on. Of the fifth, I anticipate it being this one, two, three up to here, four, and then we're currently in our fifth, which is just climbing higher and higher. Yeah. And the third wave can be further broken down into a one, two, three, four, five. So that was your wave three termination. We had the big sell off for the wave four, and then we're going into our fifth. Okay. So now let's go on the log scale because it's this final wave five, which I've drawn a pitchfork for. Uh, and I want to look at it on the hourly time frame. So let's zoom out. As long as price stays within this pitchfork, I believe that the stock markets are going to continue going higher, including the Nasdaq and the indices. So this is the main benchmark that I'm looking at. I'm monitoring Apple closely. Um, we did come close. I did think this might have been a top at one point because we were coming very close to the lower warning line. Uh, because once this lower warning line breaches, I'm of the opinion that this market, uh, the stock market in general, will, be, will start to come down also. But at the moment, it's still looking strong. There's every reason for it to keep pushing higher. And there is the argument that as long as you're hugging the lower warning line, yeah, this is suggesting that it's buying that's coming in here, buying pressure, and there's a lot of scope 
to the upside because you know we've been hugging the lower warning line so long and there's a good chance that i see this go up and tag the median line of this pitchfork once more so um yeah the pitchfork essentially drawn using the first three pivots first pivot second pivot third pivot shift pitchfork and as you can see price has been held within it uh, and so yeah this lower, wa lower warning line is what i'm looking at as long as we're above it i'm of the opinion that these markets continue to rocket higher uh, but as soon as this breaks i'll be getting concerned about this all coming down all right so that with that said that's my outlook on the stock markets and uh, yeah now i want to pull up bitcoin because as i say i am having a slightly different outlook so i'm just pulling up bitcoin let's go on the daily time frame oh and at this point i will say just because we're on the subject of crypto right now it's been a while since I did my last video, so I am going to do another discount on my uh, cryptology group. So this is the current price, £50 a month. We are going to do the 50% discount and the link to that will be in the description of this video. Uh, otherwise, you can go to wave618.com uh, just to find out more information about it. Click on cryptology uh, to find out more details. So basically, I do a weekly video covering the top 15 market caps. It includes Discord access, and it, the most important thing is it includes the full educational course, which is basically this one. Uh, so you have access to that while subscribed, and the videos are released on a, on a gradual basis. Um, so yeah, check that out if you are interested. As I say, we do have exciting times ahead. Now, back to Bitcoin. So, as I say, we do have a different outlook now. So my last video, I'll just recap on that. I was looking at it as the major A, B, C, this being the first leg of D, then come down, third leg of D would come up to around 11.7. And then we come down for the E, and then we go higher from there, okay? That was how I was looking at it. It's not been written off. It's still very much possible. But as I say, it doesn't tie in with what is happening in the stock markets right now yeah i was of the opinion that the, the whole impact of covid would have a, a much more negative impact more imminently on the stock markets obviously that is not the case stock markets have shown resilience and i'm forced now to adjust my analysis here on bitcoin because it's simply not rolling over as would be expected of course it's still possible and i have mentioned that the key range to look out for is between 9800 and 8700 reason for those levels um so let's just bring them on so that's your 9833 very important level uh, so we'll discuss that one first of all basically that level let's go on the weekly basically it's the halfway point between zero and the all-time high so the all-time high was at 19666 yeah so your halfway point is 98333 yeah so it's often a very important level to monitor the halfway point between the you know your low and your all-time high it's essentially where you find equilibrium so that is basically where we're consolidating right beneath it right now the other reason for that level what i've been looking at recently and my group will know all about it is I look at the oldest daily block. So if we go on the daily time frame, then you go, you look left as far as you can for the price that we're currently at. So I'll be looking at price action here, yeah, on the daily time frame, and then I look for an order block within this bit of price action, yeah. So it's the oldest daily block that we look for, and if we go in and zoom in on this, it's this candle here, yeah. And again, nine eight three three fits very nicely within this block yes yeah, so you can see we have a series of green candles all the way from this point at 8200 all the way up to this point at around 14k yeah and then this stands out like a sore thumb yeah so very important level 9833 and that is ex exactly the key level that we're consolidating beneath so we didn't get a complete rejection at this level so just coming back to where we are so as you can see, this is the level 9833, just bouncing off it time and time again. But we've not really seen a major rejection, no major impulse to the downside since hitting this, which is what I was initially expecting. I was expecting us to roll over pretty fast. Now, it could still roll over. I, I wouldn't be 
so convinced of that until we come beneath 8700 main reason for that is it's our 50 week simple moving average okay that's the reason for that level so I'm just going to bring that on just to uh, illustrate it so let's go on the weekly and I'm just going to remove the others just leaving the 50 for now so here's your 50 week and I've explained this time and time again once this level breaks it often allows for a new trend to develop now you can see here we went above the 50 week simple moving average we've, we've used it as support and we spent an awful lot of time above it now so I'm of the opinion that it probably does hold and we do progress higher than from here currently it's sitting at around 8600 yeah so this is the bottom of the range this point here if we get back beneath the 50 week simple moving average after spending this amount of time of consolidation above it I would be then concerned about long positions but whilst we're still above it uh, and consolidating nicely be beneath 9833 I would have to be of the opinion as long as the stock markets are still looking strong as long as Apple is above its lower warning line that this is a breakout to the upside waiting to happen so basically it's now I'm of the interpretation that this is looking like accumulation rather than distribution yeah so we've seen a very tight range here so this has really gone on for two and a half months two and a half months if we look at the ATR so let's go on the daily and just take a look at the ATR on this it's a very good representation of volatility so we have come down you can see this is the lowest point for the whole year we're at 264 dollars on the ATR it's the very, it's the lowest point yeah so we're at very low levels and um yeah it essentially means you can expect a big breakout to be imminent so now just want to pull up the bollinger bands also you can see we're really funneling with the price action here coming in tighter and tighter and i mentioned to my group last time we have these funnels in the uh, in the uh, bollinger bands is the 20 day simple moving average which often acts as either support or resistance and as you can see we're currently above it so another reason why i'm leaning bullish at this moment in time we'll just see if we look at previous times when we saw this funneling type price action was back here yeah so this was a big breakout after an awful long consolidation you can see we come down test the 20 day and that essentially then acts as support allowing for the breakout once the uh, we see the volatility come in where we saw it right here yeah and again we all remember this price action back here uh, where we consolidated for an awful long time really funneled with the Bollinger Bands and again it was the 20 day simple moving average on this occasion acted as resistance before the volatility came in so as I say it's looking like volatility is about to come in we can't be keep you know going sideways forever and yeah this is where we are at the moment 20 day simple moving average is being used as support so another kind of bullish indicator right here all right so another key thing to look out for is Camarilla pivots so let's just pull that up so it's the weekly time frame that's important to look at on Bitcoin so these have been really key and basically we're consolidating beneath the R3 on the weekly time frame so first of all just illustrating once more the significance of the Camarilla pivots it's generally the R3 R4 S3 and S4 that are the significant levels to look out for hence I've illustrated them with the more bold lines on the chart so you can see here came down tagged the s4 that was the bottom uh pretty much where price came down to around 3200 and then for the next range so on the weekly time frame each range represents one year so from here to here is one year we then came up to the r4 and you can see no closing candles above that only wicks all right we then you can see before the year closed out we finished beneath the r3 so a little bit of weakness being shown so what happens next time we come in and test our key level which was the r3 we come down very quickly but only as far as the s3 so a lot of strength seen at this point where did it take us into it took us into the r3 and now instead of just getting rejected as we got we got rejected off the r3 initially we're now making higher lows albeit there is kind of a rolling over momentum but it, we are getting those higher lows and we are just hugging this uh, not only the 9833 but also the r3 so we're just consolidating beneath that key level so another reason why this is a very very important level all right 
So really confirmation of this breakout to the upside is the break above 9833 or getting above the R3. That is the confirmation. Now, aggressive traders could go long at this point, but it is an aggressive trade. The risk is certainly there, especially until you break out of this R3. Now, question is, if we do see this breakout, what is the count and how high does it go? All right. So for me, I know a lot of people want to see it go as high as possible, want to see 20K get broken, see all time highs. Let's just take off the pivots. But for me, it's all looking part of a bigger corrective play out. So for me, this was three waves down, no doubt about it. Now, this is where a lot of ambiguity comes in. A lot of people are counting that as an impulse and I don't really blame them for counting it as an impulse. You can easily, you can count five waves within it, just a one, two, three, four, five, okay? But I've mentioned time and time again how it was actually following a uh, corrective play out. When you use the pitchfork for it, it played out very nicely following a nice ABC where this is the A, B wave ascending triangle here and then the C wave was a 4.236 extension of wave A. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into it because there's a lot to discuss in today's video. But so that was the way I was looking at it. Uh, but the, what confirmed that for me that this was all still very much corrective is this play out. This is not a wave one, two. Okay, reason being wave twos do not do this. Wave twos, they sell off fast. And then obviously you often see a zigzag, but the third leg of the zigzag will come down gradual. You won't see it come down gradual, go up, and then sell off fast. That just makes no sense for a wave two. Um, so this is a lot more characteristic of a B wave or an X wave. And in my view, it's all part of a uh, X wave. So basically I'm looking at it, long story short, the major count that I've got is the W, X is gonna come up to, I'll mention targets in a moment, but, um, and then we have a Y coming down lower. So I anticipate this coming up to around the US election, around November, I expect a pretty explosive move up. This has been tight consolidation. So a lot of time has passed. So a price needs to catch up with time. So I expect, you know, a pretty fast play out to the upside. Um, now, how high does it go? So first of all, um, I think a very reasonable way to look at it is if we do our Fib retracement from top to bottom for our W, yeah. But fib retracement is always best looked at on the linear scale. So first of all, our initial, so since coming down to the bottom of W, we've had a bounce to the 0.618 and got rejected, yeah? I, th I think it's very reasonable to have a target now at the 0 0.786. That is essentially what I'm looking at. So that's around 16K, yeah? So just remember 16K, we'll fine tune that target in a moment, but that's kind of what I'm looking at. It looks very linear. So we've come down in three waves, gone up in three waves, and then we go down in three waves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's looking at it from the uh, fib retracement point of view. So now on the log scale, let's just hide that for now. Um, so yeah, the Elliott wave count, looking at this again, if you were calling this a wave one, two, three, this is not looking like price action of a wave three. Nothing about this looks impulsive. I believe it's a complex double three where we've seen three waves up connected by an X, and we're gonna see another three waves up, essentially making a WXY. Um, so going on the daily, so here, three waves up to here, consolidation, another three waves up to here, yeah? So looking at it as, that's your W, consolidation, and then three waves up to here, yes, yeah, so WXY, and then that's of a bigger WXY. Now, I know there's going to be people saying you can't have a WXY within a WXY. Well, I disagree with that. I'm not going to go into that in today's video, but um, yeah, I disagree with that. Um, even if it goes against classical Elliott wave theory, I disagree with that because there's no indicator bigger than the markets. Um, so yeah, if you want to stay religious to Elliott wave to that extent uh, and not appreciate that there can be you know, other impacts on the market, then um, then fair enough, stick to classical edit wave and don't allow for any intolerance uh, to the rules. But um, yeah, for me, this is, as I say, I, that's a long story. Uh, maybe it needs a video in itself, but I won't go into that right now. So yeah, three waves up, uh, correction, three waves up to here. Then we've gone sideways and I'm expecting a three wave move up from here to uh, finish the X wave. 
all right so what is the count here now this is complex certainly up to interpretation can be looked at many ways uh, the way I'm looking at it is a expanded uh, flat ABC so I again made up of a WXY so W X Y yeah so here the W is an expanded flat so a B C yeah uh, then we go into a zigzag uh, to make your X wave and then I've got the Y wave as a W X Y X Z so you'll notice each wave being three waves so you've got your W X Y X Z yeah so that very is it is very very complex and certainly I'm sure lots of people have different counts for this which is absolutely fine yeah um, but yeah I'm of the opinion this is the way I'm looking at it for now uh, could certainly change as I say it could be more complex could make another low and uh, lower low before going higher in which case the count would have to be adjusted but as I say this is the way I'm looking at it at this moment in time um, it is looking like it is starting to roll up higher so I am closely monitoring this right now um, just want to pull up a key pitchfork I've been monitoring so bear with me not that one this pitchfork so this is key yeah so this is the pitchfork for the downward price action since we came up to 10.4 um, so first pivot second pivot third pivot and you can see uh, we came and tagged the median line quite nicely and we've just gone sideways I'm anticipating once we get above this upper warning line it could move up pretty fast yeah and as you can see we're just hugging it right now um, so yeah it could be a, a quick move up once we get above this upper warning line breaching the downward momentum yeah so this is one thing I'm monitoring closely right now uh, let's take off that one um, yeah I did draw this bigger pitchfork for the the major WXY to the upside targeting that 16k mark so if we go across looking to 16k and yeah i think we can tag that going up till september slash october tagging our median line following this pitchfork pretty nicely because it is the median line that we would need to tag uh, to confirm that it is following this pitchfork so um yeah it all kind of fits in with that time frame running into november would look very linear for a continuation this is a shift pitchfork that we've got here on the log scale all right so another I, I mentioned that we could fine tune our targets and as I say I like to look at daily uh, the oldest daily blocks so the next daily block after um, 9833 that I mentioned made up of that uh, doji right there would be this one here yeah so these red candles so there's your 16.6 and there's your 14.6 so falling in between there within that range is where I think our target is obviously it's a wide range of 2k but I think the 0.786 fib that would fall within it would give good correlation with the 16.6 uh, move higher so sorry let's go on the weekly I'll bring on that fib retracement again Let's go on the linear scale because that's how we look at our fib retracement. So your 16.154 is where your 0.786 fib retracement is. And you can see the 16.6k mark, which is the upper part of that daily or uh, oldest daily block that I mentioned, uh, brings us up very close to that point. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a wick up into 16.6, closing candle probably beneath the 16.154 of the 0.786 fib. So something like that. That's the kind of forecast that I'm looking at right now. Um, so, just thinking if there's anything else to mention here. Um, yeah, so that's our invalidation. Going beneath the 50 week simple moving average, which it sits around 8,600. Looking for a move up to around um, 16K. Fine tuned that, looking at those specific levels at the 0.786 Fib, as well as the oldest daily block. Uh, I think we're probably going to follow that pitchfork make, following the major WXY up until this point. Uh, another key thing that was suggestive of uh, crypto showing strength overall was I've been closely monitoring two things. So it's a 50-week simple moving average on Bitcoin, which we're quite comfortably above for a good amount of time now. But the other one was on Ripple, log scale. This pitchfork is key. So 
a nice three wave move down here and then a correction and then a continuation down so that is how i drew this pitchfork it's a shift pitchfork first pivot second pivot third pivot ignore this wxyxz that has been adjusted so just ignore that um so yeah coming down to this point here and the pitchfork as you can see we almost broke it here but we got we got a rejection so it's on the weekly time frame if we go on the daily we can see a bit better so here on the daily we went above but we sold off pretty fast now there was the argument that getting above it again here could mean that we could just sell off fast again and come back down but what we're seeing is just consolidation rather than a quick sell off we're seeing consolidation and it seems like it wants to stay above this upper warning line again another indicator why we're seeing a shift in momentum in crypto to the upside yeah and the last thing to mention is really if you go on the bitcoin dominance chart we're seeing uh it you know trend downwards um bitcoin dominance obviously we know that when it trends down it's generally a marker that Bitcoin is heading higher along with the rest of crypto. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to mention here on Bitcoin. Obviously, I felt like I had to do today's video because it is an adjustment to my last analysis where I was looking at the major triangle. Um, the triangle is not written off, but my bias has changed. As my bias has changed. I am looking at this as accumulation rather than distribution. We'll soon find out. As I say, it's going to be imminent. The Bollinger Bands have got very, very tight. The ATR is low. Uh, the volume as well, if we pull up volume, has also been just declining. If we go on the daily, we can really appreciate how much the down, how low the volume has become. Yeah. When you see these really low volume levels, just like we saw here, really low volume, you can anticipate fireworks. Yeah. So just as we had the low volume here, expecting the same kind of thing on low volume, we're going to start to see price move um so very exciting times ahead let's see how it plays out um yeah i don't i'm not going to say anything more otherwise i'll probably be just repeating myself so yeah that's it and uh, as i say any if you are interested in checking out the group where i do regular updates covering crypto i also look at the stock markets because i think it's relevant to crypto uh do that on a weekly basis and uh, as i say it includes the educational course uh we're doing the discount 50 percent off and that will be in the description to this video. Uh, so yeah, guys, all right, take care.